On Nationwide this evening, we take to the skies over Ireland with the emergency medical helicopter service based in Athlone, which this month celebrates its 10th anniversary. We join the Air Corps crews and National Ambulance colleagues as they fly missions across the country, saving lives and getting critical cases to hospital in the fastest time possible. Of the 1,200 or so 999 calls received by the National Ambulance Service every day, a small few will require a time-critical response, either because of the extreme urgency or the remote location of the call. Hello, Clinical Hub. OK, and she's breathing and everything's... OK, fantastic. And now is she stuck anywhere in the car? That's where the Aeromedical Emergency Service comes in. Based at Costume Barracks in Athlone, a geographically central location chosen to enable the crew of the Air Corps 112 aircraft to reach any part of the country in the shortest possible time. Serious accidents happen in a matter of seconds. It's the job of this crew to reach people fast. The Athlone crew's means of getting to where it needs to be in the fastest time is one of a fleet of Augusta Westland helicopters that cost about 12 million euros each and can travel in a straight line at a cruising speed of up to 300 kilometres an hour. We get involved in people's life when they least expect it. We tend to be dispatched to remote areas where there's a shortage of land-based vehicles. We can cover ground at over 300 kilometres an hour. Indeed, in our last call, we completed the journey in five, six minutes, which would probably have taken maybe an hour and 15 minutes by road transport. Today, we can find ourselves in any part of the country we regularly get tasks uh, on the move, um, whether it be on the helicopter pad or in flight, um, and we can find ourselves in the opposite end of the country. The decision to call on this crew requires very specific criteria to be met. We have a fairly strict uh, dispatch criteria. It would very much depend on where the call is. Uh, we mainly kind of stick to rural areas, you know, just because they're further away from more acute hospitals. At the end of the day, we see the worst cases. Like we, we don't do, deal with your general slips and falls. It's the big, nasty calls that we, we would deal with. There's only six helicopters in the country, so we have to kind of send them to the most acute cases because you don't know what's going to happen next. When Niall spotted Lynn coughing up blood, he knew that the internal injuries were bad. You, you know, he got on the phone to the ambulance and he said, look, this is, this is more than an ambulance. We need the, we need the air ambulance, he said. They just, you know, got us off the ground, got us to where we needed to be so quickly. When Air Corps 112 is dispatched, its ability to reach a scene quickly can often make the difference between life and death and prevent life-changing complications. Last year, the Air Corps airlifted 366 people to hospitals throughout the country. That's an average of seven per week. But it's not just helicopter transport services that the Air Corps has to be prepared for. 32 people were also flown abroad for transplant treatment and complex medical procedures. Our first call with the crew took us to Nobber in County Meath. A farmer had fallen through a roof in his yard. The dispatcher's perspective, you know, they're the key. So the better information we receive, I suppose the better service we can provide. Now that's often quite difficult because they have a really short window of interrogating the call and deciding the appropriate use of land vehicle or dispatching the EAS machine. So sometimes we are dispatched with limited information, which obviously we try and gather on the way. So there's a continuous stream of information that would happen throughout the flight. So the more informed we are before we get there, the better we can be prepared to provide that service and ultimately plan for the destination that we attend to travel to. The man's injuries were serious, but he managed to drive to a nearby health centre. We were there 18 minutes after we took off from Athlone, landing in a field adjacent to the health centre to allow for maximum clearance for the helicopter. As advanced paramedic Pat Moran made his way from the aircraft to the health centre to assess the patient and confer with his ground colleagues, he discovered the patient had had to be cut from his jeep by the fire brigade to allow ambulance paramedics to move him into the ambulance. 
After initial treatment and stabilisation, it was decided to transfer the man to Tala Hospital. Once we get airborne, I'll give you an officer and we'll call and let you know what starts. A well-rehearsed routine between ambulance, fire and Air Corps crew was put in place. Even though it's a large aircraft, it's quite compact. So the treatment is initiated from first point of contact, either by myself or my colleagues. But that continues right throughout the flight. And we can, we can do anything in the back of the aircraft that's required, the same as would have happened in the back of a land ambulance on the way to the receiving centre. Flying straight through pre-cleared Dublin airspace, everything was done to ensure the patient's condition was further stabilised. From the field in Nobber to the landing pad at Tala Hospital took 14 minutes. The aircraft was met by an ambulance crew and the man was taken straight into the hospital. The makeup of the team, we've, we've two pilots on board this aircraft um, and we've a, an Air Corps crewman in the back and an advanced paramedic from the HSE ambulance service in the back also. Um, and then we have the two technicians based here in um, Atlone. So it's a real team effort to get going and to get, get the aircraft into the air. I suppose one of the, the things that we brief in the morning is that it takes, it takes four to go and it takes one to say no. So we have a concept in aviation called CRM or Crew Resource Management, which yeah. gives everybody in the aircraft nearly an equi equal footing in terms of flight safety. And if somebody isn't happy, well then that's it, and the aircraft or the mission just stops. Yeah. But it takes us all to agree to go together. Behind all of that you have, let's say even here in Athlone, you have the technicians who were here two hours before the aircraft was even pulled out to get the aircraft together. Come back with their broken aircraft and they fix it and then and then when we take off out of out of Athlone, we talk to Shannon Air Traffic Control, it could be Dublin, Waterford, Cork. When we land in those airports we have fuelers in those airports that take care of us and fill our aircraft. When we land in scenes we have ambulance people, we have the fire crews that are on standby in case there's any issues, but everybody has a little piece to pay in each of those missions. When a call does come into the Athlone base, a well-rehearsed routine begins. Each crew member has a specific task. After the advanced paramedic has made the decision that the call meets the criteria for a helicopter mission. Location, severity of injuries, hospital options and flight times are all considered. When the call comes in, um, the advanced paramedic will write some of the information up on the board. We'll check the weather um, with the pilot or the P1. Um, if the weather is good, we'll get the thumb, he'll give the thumbs up, um, we'll walk to the aircraft and then he will start up the aircraft. Locating the scene of an incident and deciding where and how to land requires detailed information. The advanced paramedic will be still on the phone, writing down some further information such as maybe an air code, a latitude or longitude. We can put in a mobile telephone number into our Health Atlas software um, and what will happen then is the person We'll get a, a, a text message and they just have to click on the link and then that will uh, drop a pin on the screen and we'll be able to uh, find that person. There's a couple of things that we need to, to have in order to get the helicopter safely into the site. We're looking for uh, an area that's, I suppose, big enough that it can fit the aircraft, um, that the slope is within limits of the aircraft, that there's no wires um, that could cause a conflict with, with the aircraft. Since it was set up in 2012, the Aeromedical Service has mapped hundreds of safe landing zones throughout the country. We're also looking for access to the field, which we have here uh, at the gate, which leads onto the road, and the accident is just up here outside the church. Safety has to override everything. Yeah, safety is huge, especially in aviation, safety is massive. curveball is that the field has been ploughed or there's been a new house built in the area that you think was there and the Google Maps haven't been updated and all those issues but again look we have to be flexible that's the nature of the business it's a crew decision you know I suppose ultimately I have the final call on it but it won't be without input from everybody in the aircraft yeah, that's very important. Our next call was to County Tipperary a man had fallen from a ladder at a small holding again the best option was to land in an adjacent field and again, the need for immediate treatment was extremely urgent. Tipperary ambulance crews were already on scene and decided to call in the helicopter to achieve that critical time saving. Hi, Pat, how are you today? How are you doing? What's the story, guys? 
Uh, oh, 12 steps up. The ladder went forward and he came back on his back. Landed on his back. Considerable time was spent with this man in the ambulance. The priority of the paramedics is to provide the most urgent treatment, and some of it can be complex, to patients before moving them to hospital as soon as the patient has been given the necessary treatment and then clear the way for a hospital transfer. In this case, it was to Limerick Hospital, where we arrived a matter of minutes after takeoff. Leaving Limerick, we headed back for base. For every takeoff and landing, crewman and paramedic Craig Cullen provides rear view cover for the flying crew who can't see behind them. It's his job to help ensure that these takeoffs and landings are obstacle free and that other safety hazards, including people on the ground, are avoided. The pilots can only see out to their front at that kind of angle. With, with my harness on me, my floor strap, I can stand out and have eyes to the rear of the tail. So if we're coming into a confined area, a tight area, I'm basically eyes to the rear of the aircraft. Us as a crew, we look out for the hazards, you know. We do a high recce, then we come down, we do a low recce, so we'll come down to maybe 500 feet. The main things we want to identify from these high and low recces is wires, because they're really difficult to see. When you're looking at the bigger picture stuff, terrain, um, yeah, you're kind of looking, the pilots are looking what way they're coming in, what way suits with the wind. And then when you're coming down again, you're looking at the LC itself, the landing zone. You have one piece of equipment in there among all your bags that okay. intrigues me. Just take it out there and show me yeah. what it is. So we have an Irish um, Air Corps teddy bear. So if we were to carry a small infant or toddler, maybe they might be scared of the helicopter to calm them down, to relax them. It's get them the teddy bear, you know. Like these guys are after having a bad day, you know. They're after getting injured. They're after being loaded into a helicopter. Maybe on a good day they were afraid of flying before this. It, it's up to yourself to just reassure them, make sure they're comfortable. Even if it's a soft touch with a teddy bear or a blanket to keep them warm, it's it, it's the nice things like that, you know, that the patients do remember. You must have great faith in that harness at 150 feet. Up. <laughs> 